On today's show, we're going to look at how to calibrate the color and exposure on the Blackmagic camera, but how far are we really going to get? I think I'm missing something and I want you to tell me what I'm doing wrong. Was there music? I didn't hear the music. You heard me hear the music. Why didn't I hear the music? Oh, great. I broke something again. Well, at least somebody heard the music. Excellent. Good morning. Greetings and welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first thrice daily <laughs> show on YouTube every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9.30 a.m. Pacific. We go live to talk about all things photography, video, live streaming, camera, such related. If it's got a camera or works with a camera or uses a camera or there's someone related to a camera or once held a camera when it was a young child, we'll talk about it. It all has to do with cameras here. So today, you might notice already the picture looks a little bit different than usual because I have taken my Blackmagic Micro Studio Camera 4K, which is what you're looking at right now, and I've reset it to bog standard default settings because I learned, I'd say I learned some new tricks. I finally spent a little more time digging into color calibration, exposure calibration, the proper use of this chart here, which we're gonna use today. And I learned a couple new things and in the process of trying to calibrate the camera, I ran into a limitation. So yesterday I recorded a video to send off to Blackmagic so I could say, hey guys, am I doing something wrong or is this really a limitation of the device? Um, and then I thought, you know what? I'm not gonna do that, let's do it as a live show, which clearly was a crazy idea because as you're going to see, the combination of switching and everything that's gonna happen here is a little insane, but I went through everything last night, rehearsed it, kind of rehearsed, and uh, I think it's gonna work. It's gonna work, it's totally gonna work. We're gonna have some fun. So uh, let's see here, just real quick in the morning, uh, to the chat room in the morning here, who is here? We've got Cameraman and Balak and Skate Tomb, J Diggy D and Product and Tarana, and look at all these people. I see Sean, I see Tyler, I see Technic, I see all kinds of folks, and hello, Dave Dell Studio. All right, excellent. As always, if you have a question or a comment that is related to the topic at hand, stick it into the chat and put at Photo Joseph in front of it so I get a nice big red thing on my screen like that. Incidentally, if you're watching live and you love the show, there's this little dollar sign down there. You can be cool like J Mountain Hill and throw a little cash in the coffers. That is always much appreciated. Or just tell me that you love me. That works too. Um, let's get this thing started. So again, this is at its default. Let me show you what that means. We're gonna switch over to the Mac, and this is the ATEM software control. This controls the camera. And we're looking at an expanded view right now of the single camera that we're actually um, working with. If I, if I take this down, you can see I've got all the different cameras in here, although, this one, the Blackmagic camera, is the only one that I can actually do color control on here. Actually, you know, that's not totally true. My studio camera does as well, because it's also a Blackmagic camera, but I haven't, I never ran a second HDMI wire to it, so I can't, anyway, but it does it too. Um, anyway, so we are looking at, let's go back to this, we are looking at this camera right here, the one that says on air right now, and if I expand this out, you'll see we have all kinds of controls, so I can, do lift, lift lift control, I can change the aperture on the camera, I can change gamma on this, I do all kinds of stuff. And if we switch back to the actual view here, you'll see as I change the, um, oops, now I'm on the wrong camera. Good job. Let's get to the right camera. Get to the right camera, BMD on air. There we go. As I start changing the, the aperture, you can see the aperture change, you can see the lift, oops, that's not crazy. The lift, the gamma, and the gain, all of these I can change on here, and that is what we're gonna be playing with today. So let me just reset all this, so now it's back to the camera default, although it looks like the, I could open up the aperture a little bit more. Close enough, we're gonna calibrate this, that's what this is all about. So, not only can we calibrate exposure, but to a degree, we can calibrate color, and the color calibration is where we're going to run into some limitations. So the way that we're doing this today, is I'm gonna be calibrating that camera that you're looking at right now. But the problem with where it is right now is that to really fill the frame with my chart, so this is my color checker video, I'm gonna use this one. You got a nice big white balance card, and then the other side of this you have, flip it the right way, you've got black, this is actually super black. Let me, let me pull this into the close up here. Um, we've got what they call super black on here. It's a shiny black that's really super black. If there's a dark gray. This lighter gray, which I always thought was 50 IRE, or 50, you know, halfway through the spectrum, is actually 40 IRE. I finally figured that out. And uh, that is, of course, white. So this is good information to know. And then this also has the color chips, which is what we're going to use when we're looking at this scene on the vector scope. The thing is that if I calibrate the camera where it is right now, I've got this tiny little thing in here. I can kind of crop into the frame sort of to look at my scopes, but there's no really good way to do it. And last time I did this, I attempted to do this, do this I was using a piece of hardware, a it's called ultrascopes, I believe, from Blackmagic, that where you take the feed from your camera, ATEM, whatever, feed it into SDI, and then plug that into your computer, and you get full scopes on screen, which is super cool. 
except that the software is really outdated. It didn't work with even Sierra. It certainly isn't going to work with Mac OS High Sierra. So I had to find an old Mac that was running an old operating system and get that running. And I ended up returning it to BNH. It just wasn't, it wasn't enough. It was kind of, it was kind of a pain, frankly. I don't know why I didn't realize this before, but all I really have to do is feed the video feed from the ATM or from the camera into my Ninja. I've got a Ninja Inferno and I've got a Ninja Assassin, both of which will show scopes, uh, uh, RGB parade and vector scopes. So I don't know why I didn't think of this before, but that is what we're going to use to do the calibration today. Now, since the camera is all the way over there and too wide, we're going to take that camera off and set it on the desk right here. And I realize you can't see that, but we're going to do that while looking at a wide shot. So I move my studio camera in here. So this is going to be set up so you're going to be able to see what I'm doing. Um, not yet, Ryan. Um, he's like, do I have to go now? Chill. Um, <laughs> so that's, we're going to have that, we're going to have that wide view. I probably should look at the right camera. We're going to have that wide view on. Um, and we are going to be able to look at of course, the camera, uh, the, the computer screen looking at the ATEM software control. We're also going to be able to look at the Ninja, which doesn't have the display yet. It won't until I move the camera over here, so we'll be able to see that. And we're going to see a cool little um, split where we're going to be able to see, oops, that would be the wrong, uh-oh, how did I, oh, great. How did I, okay, that worked right before, that's the wrong split. How did, wait, what? How did that change? Uh-oh. Why has my preset suddenly changed? Cameras, that was not supposed to happen. What, no, why? Okay, let me just do this, try that again. Oh, great. How in the world did my input change for the split? That doesn't make any sense. Okay, hold on. Let me just check this real quick. Sorry, guys, I, that is this the weirdest thing ever. Um, I'm gonna go back to this split here, and box one somehow got changed to the chat. That makes no sense whatsoever. So let me change that to, to the demo. Where's the demo? Demo. There we go. That's what you should be seeing. So you'll be able to see this, right, as a split screen. Now let's see if I go back. Is it going to change back? Is it going to change? Oh, whew. okay. That is so weird. I have no idea how that happened, but it did. But that's, oh, I know why. Okay, I'm not going to switch to the split screen of the comments because that's screwing up the preset there. Okay, we're good. All right. We're set. We're ready to go. Uh, let's start moving cameras, and once it's all set up, I'll explain what we're actually doing. So, Ryan, you're up. And let me switch over to the wide view here. And what I need to do is get this guy off of here, which, of course, is very meticulously positioned. Hopefully, I'll be able to get it back in. Take off the HDMI monitor, because I'm going to need that on the other end. Set this guy on the desk. Untangle some cables and plug the HDMI monitor from the camera. I'm gonna plug this into the Ninja. So this is going to give me the video signal that this sees on the Ninja. Good, okay, that's right. Let's go back in. Alrighty, let's get my ears back in. Ryan's gonna lock off that shot and we'll be good to go. All right, super, so there's, Excellent, thank you, thumbs up. There's that camera. So now the close-up camera is now pointing over here. So we're gonna set that up properly in just a moment. And um, we are going to be setting it up looking at this. So we're gonna start with a white balance because that seems like a pretty good place to start. Now this camera unfortunately doesn't have a custom white balance setting. So we're gonna see exactly what that means in a moment here. Let me, I'm gonna get tricky with my little clamps here. Hold this thing up and get that into place there. And let's take a look at it through this camera view. Um, let's probably straighten that out a little bit. Not that it really matters, but close enough and probably should try to focus that a little bit. Okay, so that's focused on there. So now I need to look at the scopes over here. Let me set this up and then I'll bring this up on display for you. So now we're looking at the RGB parade. If we switch over to the view, now you're looking at the Ninja. And I've already kind of set up the white balance. Let me just kind of rechange this. So if I go to the Mac on here, you can see that on my white balance here, I can change it in increments, right? So it goes 3,200 and 34 and 36, and I can't do a custom. So it's two 300K increments that this thing adjusts at. And if we go back and we look at the split screen here, yes, look at the split screen, you can see my white balance adjustment here where the mouse is. You can clearly see that we are not even, right? And if we just I mean, you take that off, you can tell it's all yellow and icky looking. So let's get this back up nice and big. We want to get these even. I'm not, I'm not concerned about exposure right now. Exposure is not my concern. My concern is the evenness of these. So I'll go to 
56 and 54. So this daylight, these LEDs are supposed to be daylight, but clearly they're not. So as I go down, you go, that's pretty close, 4,800. If I go too far the other way, 45, they're definitely out of whack. This is not a perfect balance, but it's actually pretty darn close. It's pretty good. That is pretty good. The reason that it's uneven there, you see this climb, is just because the light hitting the white card is not perfectly even. That's that's why that is. Um, but it's as long as we see the same kind of curve going all the way through, we're good. So there's 5,000 definitely off. So 4,800 is what we're going to standardize on. Okay, so that is my starting point. The camera is, the white balance is set as accurately as it's going to be. Um... Now let's go for the exposure. So I'm gonna flip this guy around and position this back into place. Let's go look at this view and try and straighten things out a little bit. There we go. Why is this crooked like that? Um, get that up, get that up. Doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm going to, wait, where's, seriously, how is that that crooked? I'm very confused. Oh, the camera's crooked. That would explain a lot. There we go, let's straighten out the camera. Focus that again. I'm gonna wait for that little animation to go away off the bottom. And oh, see the black, um, the reflective one is kind of reflecting the silver on the table, so that's definitely not gonna be accurate. So I've got a black cloth here planned for this. I'm gonna put this down so it's reflecting that. And really, I'm trying to adjust this so that we've got a good, solid black. That looks great. Okay, excellent. So we've got now, there's my white, there's my 40 IRE, there is dark gray, whatever the heck that's supposed to be. I don't know why the company wouldn't list the IRE of that, but whatever, and then there's black. Okay, now let's go back to the view of the two devices. Let's take this, um, yeah, let's get off of color now. Let's get off the color waveform. Let's go to just the grayscale one. And here, you should be able to see, pretty straightforward, there's white at the top. There's my gray bar that's supposed to be hitting 40 IRE. And I, know, I wish I could zoom into this more, I can't, but that's, that's 40, that line right there is 40, so it's really close. There's the dark gray, which is sitting about 20, and then there's zero, is it zero? So I'm going to now start by just adjusting the aperture on the camera. Um, this little knob right here, uh, yep, this little knob right here will adjust the aperture. If I, if I just click and drag it, it allows me to change aperture and lift simultaneously, which can be really confusing. So let me just reset this, reset all, and I, oh yeah, you can't see the reset all. If you hold down the shift key when you drag this, you can strain it to adjust the aperture, which is great. So I am going to adjust this until I've got the 40 right about at 40. And so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use that as my baseline. And that's pretty good right there. I have no idea what the aperture is. It doesn't actually report that back to me, but I've got a long way to go there, uh, but we're gonna set this to about 40. So there we go. So that's looking pretty good. Now, the dark is, I'm gonna assume the dark is supposed to be at 20, but I'm not gonna base anything off of that, but that's, you know, it's pretty close. The white, um, I wish I had a little bit more even, but the white, we can tell it's peaking a little bit here. I don't want my whites to, whites to blow out. So I'm gonna pull that down and then we're gonna play with the black levels too. So now I go over here to, I've got lift gamma and gain control. And I'm gonna start with the big knobs here. The big knobs allow me to control the red, green, blue, luma all simultaneously. And uh, whereas, so like you can see this, it's adjusting all of them simultaneously in there. Whereas the ones underneath, I can click and drag on these to adjust just the red, just the green and so on. Incidentally, um, just as a point of reference for, wrong camera, uh, for, uh, for the folks at Blackmagic who are watching this, is there any particular reason there is no undo command in the ATEM software? Because I go and make a little color tweak like this, and I go, well, that's not right, I wanna hit undo. It's 2017, could I please get an undo in here? The, the reason this is important, other than the obvious, I did with my switch one away. Um, other than the obvious is, watch this. Let me go back to this. This says uh, 0.87 right now. Well, let's just make it easy. This is 0 0.00. I go, okay, well, I'll change that, right? Drag it up, and let's say I drag this up, and it says 0 0.03. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to 0 0.00. I go, okay, well, look, how hard is that, right? Is it zero? But it's not. You see, when you switch that, when you're sliding those sliders, they're not going to 0 0.00000. They could be going to 0 0.005. You don't know, there's no interface for it until, and I discovered this when I started saving out the XML files and looking at those, and you see, I think it's an eight digit long uh, decimal. It, it's really precise, but you have no access to that through the GUI. So you could slide it around, and if this is why, if you're ever adjusting it, and you're going, well, hold on, last time I was at 0.05, it looked different than it does this time, that's why, because you're at 0.055 instead of 0.050 or whatever it might be, so anyway. 
having that limitation is annoying, but combining that with no undo is extremely bad. So please, black magic, just give me an undo. Okay, so let's go back to this. Let's go back to the split screen here. I'm going to reset these little reset button, reset button. And again, looking at the scopes up here, we're going to take the white down just a little bit because I don't want that to clip. So I'm going to take it down just below. Okay, just, just right about there. Well, that's good enough for now. And let's look at the blacks. Let's take a look at the blacks and see if I can change those. You can see I can totally crush them. I can bring them up, lift the blacks. We're going to get that just above the zero line. I don't want to clip my blacks. I want to have detail in them. And now that I've done that, it looks like my gamma needs to be raised up a little bit because the 40 is now just a little bit dark. So I'll go to the middle point, to the gamma, and raise that up slightly. And every time you do it, you might need to go back and forth. You know, it's kind of like like screwing 15 screws into, uh, into a, something you're building from Ikea. You don't tighten them all down at once. You go and you go and you tighten them a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and you keep going back around and around until everything is right where it should be and falls into place. And I'm going to call that pretty even right there. Okay, so that's great, right? This looks good, but this is not the whole story. Now we're going to switch over to the RGB view and see if the colors are balanced all the way across. And they're close, but they're not quite. Look at the highlights there. The blue is a little bit low. Actually, let's say the green is high, highest, and then red, and then blue down. So I'm going to take the green down a little bit. So I'm going to go into my gain, take the green, and pull it down just a little. And when I pull that down, the red and blue are going to go up. So it's not like they're totally independent of each other. So you got to watch that. Watch those levels. That looks a little bit better there. Uh, let's go. Looks like my red mids could be a little higher. So I'm going to go to my gamma, take the reds up just a hair, which means I may need to uh, compensate for that a little bit on the highlights. Uh, no, I'd say that's pretty even. And I think the red lift could go up a little bit. So I'm going to go to the red lift and lift that up just a hair as well. Beautiful. So that is looking pretty good. Okay. So now, according to the scopes, this uh, the, the waveform, this is looking pretty spot on. But now we get into the real test. Now we get to the really hard part, the color. And again, this thing's got the color chips on it. So check this out. Let's go back to, um, let me just show you this full screen here for a moment. I'm going to switch over to this, uh, the vector scope. And now, let's see, I'm going to take my colors and super saturate these. Um, just because as I saturate it, you see what happens here. The spike gets bigger. It just makes it easier to see where it's lining up. It doesn't matter that um, it doesn't matter that it's super saturated. We'll take saturation down. Changing saturation does not change the colors. It just changes the intensity of them on here. So we're going to take that all the way up just to make it a little bit easier to see. And let me switch back to just this view. I want to kind of point out a little bit more of what's happening in here. Um, I will use this as a pointer. Can you see that? Yeah. So you can see here. That little thing that says MG, that's magenta, that's blue, that's cyan, that's green, that's yellow, and that's red, those little squares. These color lines should be pointing straight at those squares. If they're pointing straight at them, then everything is perfectly even. Over here, so you've got the red spike there, and then ignore the big ugly clump there, but right next to it, right here, you have a, a few, a handful of dots. Those are flesh tones. And unfortunately, this vector scope parade doesn't show us a flesh tone line. And uh, sometimes when you look at these scopes, you will actually see between the red and the yellow, you'll see another line that is for flesh tone. I wish that had that on here. You know, I should have plugged in the, the Ninja Assassin, uh, Ninja Inferno to see if that has it. Oh, well. Um, so that's, that's what that other clump of data is for. Um, so basically what we need to do is get these colors to line up. Well, this is not all that hard, actually. So if we go back to the split view here, I have a hue slider, hue right here, and I can rotate the hue. And watch what happens to the vector scope as I rotate the hue. The whole thing just spins. I go, okay, well, great, just spin them until they're lined up. Okay, well, let me, let me reset the hue. I'm gonna go up here and say reset hue. There we go, so back to 180 degree, this is standard. We can see here that the green, every, basically everything is off. So I'm gonna rotate it, let's, let's focus on the red, green, blues. I'm gonna rotate this so that my red is lined up. So we're gonna call that, there we go, red's lined up. But now look at the green and the blue. Wait, there's nothing, like everything's way off. Okay, that's no good. All right, let's try, let's try lining up the greens. So I'm at 185 degrees right now, by the way. Let's try rotating this. So I get my green lined up. Magenta's pretty close, blue's good. So green and blue are good, but the red is way off, which means my flesh tones are way off. <sighs> and cyan's way off. Like yellow's kinda close, that's, that sucks. So I don't have, as far as I know, and this is the limitation, 
as far as I know, I don't have a way to say, all right, take the yellow and pull it this way, take the blue and push it there. I need that individual control. Now, why is this happening in the first place? That's a really good question I don't know the answer to. Is it a limitation of the camera? Is it, um, is it my lights, right? right? Is it because I'm using not great quality lights in here? There is this thing um, in LED lights called the green spike, and I've never actually fully understood what that means, but I wonder if it has something to do with this, if the green is kind of off because of it. I don't know. But given that it's a person on camera here, I'm gonna focus on the, uh, the flesh tones, which basically means getting the red lined up, the flesh tones fall into place, and everything else falls where it does, and it's not gonna be perfect, and that's the super frustrating part. So let's go back to the hue. So we're now at 173 degrees. Remember, I had that 185 earlier, but let's go and let's get the red basically lined up. Maybe I'm gonna do a little different splitting there. Red and yellow, or see, look at the red and the yellow. They're kind of right between each other there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna assume that. And just in case, just in case you were wondering if there's any way that the changes that I made before to the lift game again are affecting this, I'm gonna prove to you that they're not. Let me do this, let's go back to this view. Because I don't have any way to easily save these controls, I am going to do a copy, copy these settings. And, um, and that way I can paste them in. Now Trevor is saying that there should be a dot in the middle of each circle you can click and drag. You're probably talking about this right here. You're right, but clicking and dragging this dot changes these numbers here, right? So, and so here, let's take a look at this. Let me go back to the split. And um, if I grab this dot here and I start to move it around, you can see the whole thing kind of shifts, but it's not, um, it is not spreading those out the way that I would expect them to. And I shouldn't say the way I expect them to, the way that I want them to or need them to. So doing this does not seem to fix it. And you can see the center point here gets totally whacked out anyway if I do this. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is a way to do this properly and I'm just totally missing it. But I'm definitely not getting what I would expect from there. So let me do a full reset on here. And the reason I wanted to do a full reset was to show you that my changes earlier are not what screwed this up. So if I take my saturation back up to see that, see, it's still, as I do the here rotation, I still cannot get that into place. It just, it just doesn't work. So I'm going to paste my settings back in that I just copied to the clipboard, paste, and that is what we're deciding on. Let's take the saturation back down to normal, back down to 50. And if, we can change saturation more if we want to later if, it, if I just think it would look better. But, um, but that's where we're at. So that's now exposure and color calibrated as much, as, and white balance as much as I seem to be able to do. I want more but that seems to be what I'm able to do. So now let's take this camera and put it back on the stand and see what it looks like. So let's get this get back into place, unplug that, and get this guy back in. Somebody commented that there were a lot of cables in here. Yes, yes, there really, really are. It's, it's a little bit crazy. Um, oh, right, focusing on this thing is a, this is gonna be fun. The, Autofocus capabilities of this Blackmagic camera um, do leave something to be desired as well. So if I switch back to this view, um, I'm definitely not in focus, so let me grab a focus target. That seems to work better than just having it focus on me. Hit focus, and see, look at that. It went right past it. Come on, camera, just do it again. Just focus. Just I can do manual focus. Look at this. If I want to do manual focus, it's like I've got this knob here, and I have to spin this and spin it and spin it and spin. This is the autofocus button. It just doesn't quite cut it. So I need to bring this back up on screen. I realize now you're looking at an autofocus picture. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Let's see, get back towards focus. Back towards focus. We're almost there. Usually, if I get close, then the autofocus will take over. If I hit the auto, let's try it again. Hit the auto. Yeah, I think that's it. Good. We're going to call it good enough. Hopefully that's, been sh hopefully that's sharp for you guys. Okay, so this is the calibrated look. How's it look? Uh, let's go back to the default. It was not that different. It is not that different. But let's go back to the default. I'm going to do a reset all. So there, it can, I can see some different colors in the skin tones, for sure. Exposure differences, but more importantly, skin tone differences. So this is default. And let me paste my settings back in. This is... Oh, excellent. Oh, because of the 100. I had the 100 saturation. 
Let me set that back to 50. And let me copy that to the clipboard. So copy that. Okay, so let's go again. So here's the calibrated one. Here is the totally reset default. That's default. Let's go back to the calibrated one again. And here's calibrated. So you guys tell me, which is better? Is it worth all that effort or just leave it alone? That's it. That's, that's what we're doing today. That was the experience. So if you're going to do something like this, you've got this guy, the color checker video. Um, there's also the passport, which is the little mini one, which works just as well. It only has the three bars, which is what you really need, and the extra dark gray one. I don't know if there's any benefit to that. Uh, you just have to get the camera closer, use a tighter lens. But this is awesome. It's pocket-sized. It's super teeny tiny. This one also has a little focus target, um, which is very handy. Which probably be handy for this. Um, let's go to here we go, a little close-up camera so you can see that. you got this little focus target. So there's your focus target. There's your white balance. And open that up again. You've got your colors, and you've got your black. If This is cool, too. The way this works is you can kind of set it up like this. Um, you could let me get this thing out of my way. You could do it like this. So it's kind of self-standing where I had to deal with using these things to hold this up. Um, the little one is definitely a bit more convenient in that regard. So just one of those things, something to uh, to consider adding to your repertoire. This is different than the photo one, though. Very important. This is different than the photo one. Last thought I'm going to leave you with, um, and then we're going to take a quick look at the comments, see if there's anything relevant to what we're talking about today, and then we're going to bail out of here. Um, last thought I'll leave you with is I have yet to sit down and properly learn how to use DaVinci Resolve. But one of the features that it has, which is so cool, is you shoot, you can shoot your video with and have a shot of this thing in there, or the little one, works the same. And then go into Resolve's color corrector, and they have an integration built in. I don't think it's even a plugin. I think this is built in natively, an integration with Color Checker. So you tell it what passport you have, or what um, color checker you have. And then there's a little grid that you drag around. So, hey, this is the red. And I think it'll, I think it's supposed to automatically just find them. But if it doesn't, you drag them around and go, that's the red, that's the blue, that's the yellow, whatever. And then it builds a profile based off of that. Now, I think. And I'm going to confirm this, and I will do another video like this around the GH5. But I think at that point, what you could do if you're shooting Vlog L is bring in a shot, shot in Vlog of your color chip chart into Resolve, do a color match, save a LUT, bring that back into the GH5, and now you've got a LUT that is for previewing on screen um, of a totally calibrated image. I'm pretty sure that's how that would work. We'll find out. But but that's a really cool thing about Resolve. So that is that is. That is nice. One of these days I gotta learn that software. So that's that. So let's see what else is going on in the comments here, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna call it. Um, yeah, the cables. Uh, so now I can safely switch to my comments. But Trevor says a show oh, that was we were talking about that. Oh, I guess we did everything. Trevor's saying we should be a dot in the middle of each circle. Which yeah, we we looked at that. Um, <laughs> Trevor says is not efficient focusing. No, it really isn't. I don't know why it is. Um, because autofocus on the bigger camera on this studio camera works quite well. It's not you know, instantly fast, but it works quite well. So I don't know why focus works on that one, but really doesn't work on this one. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Trevor's calibrated is better. It knocks out some of the greens. Excellent. Everybody's agreeing that it's better. Default skin has a slight green tint and darker background. Calibration is better. Right on. Um, and Trevor says, DaVinci is easily my favorite piece of video software. I really got to learn it. Thomas says, color finale is also automatically adjust with the color checker video within Final Cut. Yes, I have yet to make that work properly. I would love for you to teach me how to do that because I've watched their videos, I've tried it, and it just didn't work. It's probably been a year, but I, was, I gave up. I just went, oh, forget it. I cannot figure this thing out. It is not working the way I expect it to. Um, but if you know how to do it, Thomas, you do videos. Record a video on it. Show me how it's done. That would be awesome. And then I'll tell everybody about it. Um, there is one more video. I've already linked to it up here that is very informational about using informative about using this. Um, it's funny because in the video he mentions the GH5, but he doesn't do anything with it. He's using a much larger, high-end video camera that has some more color control in it. Um, and then he goes and he shows with a Sony camera how you can do certain color adjustments, which is really cool. So I'm going to dig into what we can do with the GH5, um, since obviously that's what I have here, and uh, we'll take it from there. But that's that. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope that was interesting and educational. And that's it. We're going to call it a day. It is Friday. Go have yourselves a lovely weekend. I know I'm knocking off, or off, knocking off early today and going to go some, spend some time with the missus. There's lovely, beautiful rain outside. We're going to go hang out in it, apparently. There's a winery around here somewhere. I'm sure that's got our name on it. Take care of yourselves, everybody. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.